Regina and Emmanuel. All right. Okay. Hello. So, um, like any good technology worker, we should be agile and be able to move and pivot and do all those kinds of things. And so today, after I give the spiel, which is mostly for the audience at home, hi audience, um, uh, we'll kind of feel out your needs and see what you want to do. If you want a workshop, if you want to, if you already have cases going that you want to build, or if you want to start from scratch. So we're prepared to do all of those different things. Margine, can you introduce yourself and where you're from? I can. I'm Margine Anderson, and I'm a learning technology consultant from Do It Academic Technology. So, um, okay, so before we look at the tool, and Emmanuel's going to go over this in just a second, I do want to show you this. This is going to be our home base today. Not the knowledge base, but this excellent, excellent page on the knowledge base. It's basically a resource that Emmanuel, with the help of Blair Bunny, have created. So I'm going to just click on CSCR, and we go here to the Case Scenario Critical Reader Support Case. And so many of the things we'll be talking about today are on this page, including the CSCR t uh, examples and the templates that we'll be talking about today. All right, so before we get into that, let's just talk about what CSCR is. CSCR um, stands for Case Scenario Critical Reader. And you could probably throw an interactive lecture in there too, but that would be a lot of letters and so. Um, and that's basically what we, we use CSCR for. It's a way to build case scenarios, which are dropping a student into a kind of a, a simulation, basically of something that you want them to experience. Now we can't, as teachers, walk next to every single student and say, let's go have some experiential learning and I'm gonna talk you through it, I'm gonna be your mentor for that. We can't scale that unless we have like three kids in our class and really that's not working out um, at the university anymore, don't we have three people in your class? <laughs> so we have to figure out a way to scale that, and that's what a case scenario really does, is we can create an online environment, we can create ourselves as a mentor to, to walk and talk the student through the decisions that they're making, and we can offer consequences both positive and negative to the decisions that they're making. So that's what a case scenario really is, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, we also have the close read. Now I don't know about you, but um, I was an English major, and I grew up, oh, did grow up, and when I was in college, I had Shakespeare, and my Shakespeare text was annotated, right? So I'd have the, the text that Shakespeare wrote, and then we'd have the annotations um, or the professor's remarks. I think that's a really helpful way for people to understand what they're reading, especially if it's something that isn't, you know, regular text, or if it's in a different language or something to that effect. So that's a, another use that we see the critical reader for. It teaches students how to close read. And just like we can't be sitting right next to our students and say, hey, you know, as you're reading that, look, look at that. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna take you out to the internet and I'm gonna show you the, the uh, social context that that came from, or the historical context. Or as you're reading this, I want you to be thinking about this. We, we'd love to be able to do that. That would be amazing. And we can't do that as a one-to-one. -one. So what we can do is create these critical readers that scale that process, and students can experience that um, in their own time. Really, both of those ex are examples of how we can be coaches and mentors and help our students become better critical thinkers, which is kind of where this tool developed from. Um, so the history of the tool is that it developed here on campus. I don't know the time frame. Probably six or seven years six ago. Six to seven years ago, okay. And it was a way to create these case scenarios and critical readers, and it, and it had to meet some criteria. It had to be easier to use than some of the products that we had um, that were to be, that we pay for, and it had to be accessible. So some of those things, and I don't mean accessible like easy to get to, it had to be accessible in terms of um, making sure we uh, are, having a, have ability for people who use screen readers or um, um, text readers or different ways to ensure that even people who have uh, different abilities in their reading um, are able to use it. So there's only one, for example, there's only one type of typeface and that is 
ARIO because that um, is easier to read for some people who have dyslexia. Okay, so those are some of those examples of where that came from. And what we were a bit, have been able to produce are pretty cool. I'm gonna show you a couple of these examples and I have to apologize. I don't know if any of you have been in um, Desire to Learn today or Learn at UW. You, if you have been able to get in, yay for you. For the most of us, we haven't been able to. And I have an, had an example of what I call an interactive lecture on my Learn at UW site. And of course, even though I am a Learn at UW administrator, I can't even get in to it at all. <laughs> it is not there right now. So. Um, you can imagine what an interactive lecture is. It takes the place of a lecture. It gives the information, kind of combines video, it combines all those kind of cool things of a lecture, makes it interactive by doing some quizzing and, and things like that. So if you want to see that example, I'll be sure to, to uh, share it with you once D2L is up and running. Okay, to give you an idea of some of the examples, um, or cases that have been created. Now, these are really high level cases. Um, you don't have to do anything this high level and still get some of the rewards. We can take a look at this piece. We will actually go with Debbie. So Debbie is in the Department of Kinesiology. There it is, the case scenario. And she built this case um, in conjunction with one of her clients. Uh, it, it's a true story based on real events and obviously HIPAA standards and things like that, the client was involved in it. And you can see that we're going to set the scene here. It's at UW Emergency. This is actually Debbie, so she puts herself in as a class presence. And she's saying, hey, I'm gonna take you on the spinal cord, a uh, field work in the spinal cord unit. Here's what happened. She gives the case uh, Jenny was ejected from a vehicle during the accident and she was transported to UW by Fight for Life. So there's the context of it. Um, and gives us some of that background on the patient, continued background. And she's gonna conduct the assessment and she's inviting the student to become part of that assessment. So she's putting a personal touch on it. You can see here, before we get started, they need to view the chart. And this right here um, is a tab. It's a pretty easy tab box. You can see what the requisitions are, precautions, um, social history, all that, uh, work history. Um, and I don't need, do not know what PMH stands for, so sorry about that. So before they can sign on, before they can move on, they had to sign it to show that they actually read it. You hit continue. And now Debbie, because she's mentoring, is going to have some questions. Are we able to transfer the patient out of bed? Did anybody? I've done this one before. <laughs> so let's say no. Oh, wait, she gives you some feedback because she's mentoring. It's not quite right. It says activity as tolerated, aspen collar on at all times. So we can do that. All right. And now we can move forward. And there's the Aspen Collar. So she's giving her the, the students the whole effect of her thought process and her activity as she walks through with that patient. So that is what we call a case scenario. Let's take a look at a critical reader. And we have to look for this guy. This is from Jan Miranowski. And this was originally created in French. He's a French protect, uh, a French um, teacher, professor, and he's a heavy user of, of CSCR. So we're going to begin, and you can see here there's some instructions. These are images, so that makes it a little bit. Um, you have to be a little bit fancy in the way you do that. But what I want to show you is what how he how he annotates the text. So I'm going to hit highlight. And then when I click on here, this passage right here, on this side, we get a professor's commentary, which we could listen to. I don't have it plugged in. So he can tell us and walk us through exactly what that phrase means. We can click here. Again, the professor's commentary, walking us through, bringing in some extra social context, extra historical context. And over here, we have this interesting word, sapience, 
and that when I hover over it, it's not a common word that maybe students might have interacted with before. So um, Jan, being a great teacher, knows that, anticipates that, highlights it, and can put a little bit of a, um, a hint under it. So sapiens actually means with a wisdom. So that is, in a nutshell, what a CS, or case scenario, and a CR critical reader is. And like I said, if you'd want to see an example of an interactive, um, an interactive lecture, we have those. They're not on this page, which is why I can't show you. But we also had a uh, act, yeah. active teaching lab on interactive lectures yeah. by Ariella, Ariel Rakatan Rakatan last fall. Margaret. And there are links to that on the active yeah. teaching lab page. Mine is about physics. Hers is about uh, plant pathology. 